I've always been kind of fascinated with the with the like optical illusions that pain can play on your eyes. Even even just painting how um, how something can look rough and messy up close, but when you step back, your brain kind of connects the points and puts stuff together that it knows um, should be. So it like looks better from a distance. So just playing with that like. Um, yeah, those kind of optical illusions I think is fun, like playing tricks on your head. What's up you guys? This is Justin of Just Win Customs. Today I'm going to be sharing with you guys, I'm going to be showing you guys a tutorial on how to do this custom Nike Air Force One black glitch. Not only for the Air Force Ones, but this is something you can take and apply to basically any Nike shoe. So excited to share these tricks with you guys and see you guys um, take it and run with it. Okay, so the first step to this custom, um, we're actually going to take the swoosh off. And to do this, we're going to be using a seam ripper and a X-Acto knife. So you'll see here, I start with the seam ripper. I'm just going to start tucking it under the stitching. Basically, we just want to get enough to where we can lift the swoosh up and then we'll take the Xacto and come back in. You wanna pull away from the shoe and you wanna cut the thread towards the swoosh and not towards the shoe, just so that you don't risk um, cutting the shoe. Okay, so once we get to the end, there's just gonna be a couple stitches left. So we wanna come back in with the seam ripper and again, pull those from the top. And you wanna cut just at a little angle, trying to tuck the blade under the heel tab here. And so the last step that I like to do once we have all of those threads on, I actually like to take a lighter and if you just run the flame just over the threads a little bit, anything that's sticking out will just kind of burn those back down. Any loose hairs will stick those back down and give you a better surface to paint on. Okay, so next step, we're actually going to prep the leather using the Angelus Leather Preparer ND Glazer. So you'll see I'm just gonna um, just pass over it lightly a couple times. This is an important step. Take your time with this one because this is what makes the paint actually stick to the shoe and increases the durability and wearability of the shoe. Yeah, so you can see I'm only prepping the area that we're going to be painting. Um, there's no need to prep the toe cap or any of that. Basically just the swoosh and I'd like to do these whole panels. Even onto the midsole, you can, you can lightly brush that as well. Okay, so for the black version of the glitch shoe, I actually do make a stencil. You can do it by hand, but just painting the white onto the black takes a lot of coats. So if you're able to make a stencil, it's going to save you a lot of time. Okay, so next we're gonna transform this swoosh into the actual glitch swoosh that you see on the finished product. Basically where we place these different sizes of tape is gonna determine how the effect looks. So you can, uh, you can follow exactly what I do or you can experiment on your own and find a method that you like. The glitch effect is basically taking this swoosh and as if you were cutting out parts and you shift some of them backwards and you shift some of them forwards. So say, say if I erase that line, you can see that now what we have is we have an indent there and it's extended back. So we basically took that part of the swoosh and just pulled it back just a little bit. All right, and so what I like to do is I like to stagger some of them. Like I said, some of them backwards, some of them forwards. So this one, let's push this one forwards just a little bit. I'm going to pull this one back again. Try to keep it in line with that first, with those first couple. And let's, let's match this one with the one we put forward. Okay, so you can see the front part of this is done, but now we have to mimic the effect on the back as well. So like these, this first one, we pulled this back. 
So this guy, we need to shift this one back. And same thing on the back end. Try to keep that same distance. And same thing with this one. Let's see, there's the original line. And this is what we pull back. Original and back close, close to in line with that. Uh, this one shifted forwards. So we shift that forward and back again. Last one. Okay, so you can see it's all mapped out. It looks a little busy right now, but um, as I start to cut it out and explain it, it will make a little more sense. So what we do, we start with the original line, but whenever we hit the tape, you act as if the tape is a line. So I need to cut back along the tape. I need to cut down, because that's a line I made. And then back along the tape line. There's our original swoosh. You can see this part I've mapped out for you guys, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. So we cut it back along the tape. That's the line we made. And back forwards along the tape again. Okay, so this, this custom isn't, I wouldn't say it's very challenging as far as painting. Um, not too complicated. We're not shading, we're not mixing colors, but it is pretty technical like this step. If you get sloppy with this one, the final effect isn't gonna look as good. So try to take your time, make sure you're pretty precise with this. take the inside swish out and you can see essentially this is what's going to be filled in with the white paint and this is what our swish will look like. Now that, um, now that it's taped off, what we're gonna do, we're gonna mix my flat white with too thin and we're gonna pass it through the airbrush. With the white over the black, I usually do four coats. Um, again, anytime you're airbrushing, you wanna do light coats and build up. Um, you don't wanna spray too heavy on any of them because because that's when you lose some of the some of the durability. Also, when you're spraying, try to spray straight on. Um, if you try to tuck under, it's gonna actually spray under that stencil. But if you go straight, it should keep the lines pretty crisp. Now it's time to start taking these colors and start lining it. The first color we're gonna use is this bright neon Parisian pink. I'm gonna mix this just with a little bit of white to put a base coat. Because if you put this neon color, since the neons are a little bit more translucent, um, the, black's, the black's gonna show through too much. So by putting a base coat down where it's mixed with white, we have some of the actual color. And when we put the second coat of just the pink on top, it's gonna, you can see it's gonna stand out super bright against the black, which is what we want. So next, I'm gonna take this chili red, and basically I'm gonna put this on top of the pink and try to mimic the same size of line that I had for the pink and just extend it outwards. Okay. 
Okay, now that that coat of red is done, we're gonna put our final coat of color, which is going to be this light green, and we're gonna put that on the bottom, um, stacked on top of this gift box blue. Okay, so next step, we're gonna take this flat white and we're actually gonna white out the Nike Air on the tongue and on the back tab. After about three coats on the tongue and the back tab, you can see that they're both pretty solid white. So the next step is we're gonna start applying the glitch effect to both of those. So basically the left side is gonna be pink, the right side is gonna be green, almost like you would if you're putting um, like a block shadow or a 3D effect on, a, on text on a letter. Okay, so next step, we're gonna connect the swoosh onto the midsole. And again, just to reiterate, um, you don't wanna actually paint on the midsole if you can avoid it. But for this custom, since it's just a little bit going down on the lip, it will be okay. So you can see this is gonna be, this is gonna be pretty transparent. So it will take a couple coats. When spraying your finisher, you want to keep it keep it at a decent distance. Um, try to do light coats because you don't want it to um, you don't want to see like water droplets of the finisher. You don't want it to build up. You want it to be a nice even coat um, over the entire surface. Okay, so I just finished spraying these with the matte acrylic finisher, and that was the last step for this tutorial. Thanks for watching. Um, be sure to do all that youtube -y stuff, like, subscribe, um, whatever else we can do on here. So I'm excited to see what you guys come up with using not only this on Air Force Ones, but I want to see you guys take this theme and apply it to different shoes as well. Um, be sure to tag me and show me what you do. So yeah, thanks again for watching and hopefully I'll see you guys again soon.